Hey guys, it's Clovis, and today we are going to find out how to beat Winnowit and Fableur in three turns. This is a real thing that you can do at home, by the way. Plug in your PlayStation 2 or load up the emulator and try it yourself. It's a real thing, there's no cheating involved. We're just going to talk about the speedrun strategies to defeat Winnowit and Fableur. We're going to focus on the Skull Knight version for this video. So the main point of this strategy is abusing the fact that the AI don't properly understand the crush terrain. So the gist of this is that while the enemy deck leader is on crush terrain, they don't actually think that you can complete a move with a monster on the crush terrain that has 1500 or higher attack. So what this means is that Manowdon Fabler, Skull Knight or any deck leader while they're on the crush don't actually feel threatened with an attack if your monster has 1500 attack or higher because they don't actually think that you can attack onto the crush tile with a monster that exceeds the crush tile threshold. Ultimately what this means is that if we change the terrain so that we can put any powerful monster in front of his deck leader but his deck leader is on crush he will just stay right in front of it and then we can just attack him and he will stay on the same tile and then we can attack him again and he will die. That's it. So to execute the strategy for this, what we do is we open up with a terrain card. In this example, I'm going to be using Yami, Wasteland. These are the cards that we use in an any percent speedrun in Duels of the Roses, and this is a speedrun strategy, so we're going to use one of these cards. Now, if we open with this in the middle, it is actually extremely likely that Monadon Fableur will play a trap card in front of him, because he will prioritize traps over any other cards. However, if he doesn't open with one, and he wants to play a monster, he will play that behind him to the right. 
So if we open with a terrain card, we can move our deck leader forward, play the card in front of us, and then we keep it face down in the middle tile. We just move it one space forward and just pass. And then hopefully he does not open with a trap card if we want to do this really, really fast three turns. And now that he's played a card out of the way, what we do is we activate it to the right side of the tile where it was rather than the middle. Now you can actually activate it in the middle and the middle forward, but this ruins a manipulation that we're going to aim for. So what happens is when you activate it to the right tile, this means that the normal spot that he stays on is still a crush tile. So even though when we attack onto it, we don't get the plus 500 attack bonus from the terrain, he will not move away from this tile and he will stay there, meaning that after we attack successfully, we can attack him again the turn after. Now of course this does assume that we are attacking with a card that has 1500 attack or higher, and of course you want to attack him with a high attack card as possible. If you attack him with something lower than 1500 attack, he does believe that you can access that tile with your monster, and so he will move away from it, and he will continue to move away from it, unless you actually just don't move your card forward at all. In which case, we're going to talk about the strategy for beating this guy as fast as possible without changing the terrain. In fact, if you attack him, and then you just leave your monster there, he moves back, which is pretty natural. He just moves back, you know, he avoids your monster. But instead of continuing to pursue him, you just end your turn, and he goes onto his original spot again, completely ignoring the fact that you have a monster there that you're going to attack him with again. And this is ridiculous. There is no real known reason why they do this, but in general the AI seems to prioritize this tile that they want to move on over any possible threats. And so what this means is that if you have a bunch of cars that just have 1400 attack, you can just attack this guy three times successfully, as long as he doesn't activate any uh, Diane Keto the Cure Master or somehow kill you before you do this you can just easily defeat him, and you don't have to worry about any Skull Knights with Ryokus because he won't play any of them on the Crush Tiles. And if he does play something like a Feral Imp with Ryoku, or Karibo with Ryoku on the Crush Tile, it just dies if you have more than, you know, however many life points. If you've got 4,000 life points, and he wants to give 2,000 life points to a Karibo, it will die on Crush, and you don't even need to worry about it. So, attack him directly when he's on his normal spot, Assuming you've done this successfully and there's no mirror forces, you will deal damage. He moves back, you pass, he moves back forward, you attack him again, and then you can play a monster on top of that monster and attack him a third time for the lethal damage. Even better is if you have any immortal cards, for example Slate Warrior, this is the easiest one to get, you just need to enter in the password. You can just attack him twice. He does move away because he does understand that your Slate Warrior can move on Crush and attack him, but unless he activates a Mirror Force or plays some Trap Card next to him, you can just attack him again. That's it. You don't even need to worry about it. So yeah, apparently this guy is actually a lot easier than you thought he would be, so give it a go yourself. Um, funny enough, this is the easier of the two bosses because if you don't change the terrain at all, you can just play these low attack monsters and beat him, but if you want to beat him as fast as possible, you can change the terrain and he will stay on a spot with the Crush Tile as long as your monster has above 1500 attack or 1500 or higher, and then you can just attack him twice. That is effectively the speedrun strategy for Manawadan Fableur, the Skull Knight version. In the next video, we're going to be talking about Manawadan Fableur, the Chakra version. We're going to show you how to beat him in three turns, which is a bit of a different strategy, but it's also quite interesting, and you can also implement that yourself. So uh, I'll see you then, and of course don't forget to check out my Twitch where I speedrun this game, and you might get to see the strategies implemented live. Um, so thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys later. In the meantime, enjoy what's on the screen, some other speedrun content, or like a speedrun VOD, or another tutorial, and there will be a tutorial series playlist that you can check out as well. So yeah, stay tuned for more, and I'll see you guys in the next video.
Actually, wait a minute. We need to demonstrate this Muka Muka strategy because, as I said before, I did intend this to be a speedrun tutorial video, but you can actually beat this guy in two turns. Now, one way you can actually beat this guy in two turns, and same with the other Manatum Fabler, is if they create a monster with 4,000 attack or above, and then you attack them successfully with an eye armor or green capper, you can OTK them on your second turn. Uh, the problem is, you do need them to create a 4k attack monster, which needs something like a Dark Elf with a Ryoku, or if it's something like um, him playing uh, Princess of Sarugi behind him, or anything with 2000 attack has to have a Ryoku, or something with 1000 attack has to have two Ryokus, or like 500 attack has to have three Ryokus, and then you need to successfully attack him. So the likeliness of this was really, really low, so I thought it'd be more consistent to use Muka Muka because. Uh, all you need to kill him with the Muka Muka on your second turn is 12 monsters in your graveyard. If you have 12 monsters in your graveyard, that will boost your Muka's attack by uh, 3600. And then, so, you just need to attack him successfully. So, you can see, again, in this footage, I'm basically just doing what I can to create as many monsters as possible in the graveyard by fusing, like, chain fusion, fusion climbing, just, uh, like, I'm purely doing this just to create more monsters in the graveyard. And then once I have enough, I can just attack him directly on my second turn. I did try this with uh, a rock deck leader, but it just makes the most sense to use any deck leader that has movement bonus. Because that way you're guaranteed to be at the enemy deck leader. As you can see in this footage, he doesn't even move forward. But yeah, as long as I have enough monsters in my graveyard to make Muka Muka at least 4k attack, I can attack him on the second turn and OTK him with the Muka Muka. Because yeah, Muka Muka, its effect. Gains 300 attack for every single card in your graveyard, and you can create more monsters than you dump by fusing monsters and dumping those as well. And then of course, just like, Monster Reborn and Mimikat is strictly to... It's like an extender, like if I dump Muka Muka with the Monster Reborn, then I can flip it up on the tile ahead of myself. And uh, yeah, overall, that's the most consistent way to kill this guy in two turns. Uh, I did want to clarify that you could beat him in two turns, uh, even though this video is actually, yeah, uh, transparently designed around, like, a, a disguised speedrun tutorial, but, hey. You guys know how to beat him with a realistic deck, you guys know how to beat him with a busted deck, you guys know how to beat him in general, and as I stated, you can actually beat this guy uh, with, like, a beginner deck, as long as you just keep attacking him with, like, 1400 attack cards, he does move back on this spot, and that is a strategy you see quite often in the no-password speedrun. Otherwise, in the 80% speedrun, if you're going for like the really fast time, you do want to do the three turn, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, if you want to uh, two turn him, well, you got to kind of build a deck around doing that. So yeah, good luck with that.